Hey there YouTube, Shane from HowToWrench.com here and we've got a switch that the kill switch is working but the starter button is not working and so as you're following along in our restoration series here I'm going to go ahead and make an attempt to restore the switch back to not only working function but back to long life. Uh, let's zoom in here and you can see she's in pretty bad shape. We're pretty super corroded in here. There was a lot of little, uh, actually there was little insect nests and whatnot, and this was just working uh, last fall. So as the customer brought in, I expected it to be a carb job or something, not a not a no start issue. But um, she's pretty rusted, uh, has the appearance as if it sits outside or is definitely weathered. And I'm going to show you how to disassemble this. The other thing that I'm going to show you is how to actually fully restore it. You can see here that the sheathing is busted up and it's really hard. I'm going to go ahead and show you how to unpin these. I'm going to show you how to take off this old sheathing and heat shrink new and bring this back into excellent condition to put back on the uh, vehicle that you're working on. Let's get started trying to test the starter switch itself. I'm going to start by making a legend of the wire colors as they are in the housing and as they are in the switch. I'll make a little legend and draw it on the back of the work order. And I can't stress enough how important it is to go ahead and shoot photos of it while you're doing this as well. Grab a couple photos, get up close, and make some records. Here's a close-up of that legend. You want to make sure and note any clips in that you're doing it from the top or the back or however you're choosing to do so. What I'm using there is these guys from Mac Tools. These are fantastic to build a back probe and not create damage while you're testing. Once the screws are out and you've laid your parts to the side there, take a, some type of hook like this and what you want to do there is just carefully try and find something to get underneath there and then you'll be able to pull that switch up and out of the housing. As you can see this is quite dirty. There's even a drain hole from the factory because they know water is going to get in here and have a way to get out. Uh, it can't be 100% sealed in here so it's, it's not going to be uncommon that's going to be pretty dirty. Let's uh, take a look at how to get the switches themselves apart even further. See here is how the switch actually works. I'll go ahead and operate it from underneath here. I'll hold it in place. And there's a spring in here. It's a momentary switch. So when you push this, there's a couple of contacts in there. One on the button and one on the housing that are going to connect the two wires across the back side here to have a complete path. One wire is soldered to one ring of that switch and the other one is to the other wire. So how we actually have this one working, power comes in through this white switch through the kill switch here. If it's in the on position, that kill switch wire makes contact with this orange and white wire. When you push the starter button, that connects the path to the yellow and green wire and then goes on to start a relay and then completes the circuit. Well, we're not going to take any chances since it's this far apart. We're going to clean the whole thing. To get these apart, at this point, it's just a matter of prying a tab apart here, like this, and then pulling the switch apart. And this can be real common for you guys that this stuff is usually just going to fall apart or spring apart on you. The thing I want you to notice about the starter button is that the spring is directional. We do have it where we want the small, the small side of it, it should make sense, goes to that small nipple, and then the larger one goes to the, the switch itself. Can you see how dirty that is? We'll get that copper contact there really good and cleaned up and then we should be able to get next to no resistance on the meter. And then let's take a look at the kill switch. It's real similar. You can see the locking tab right there. So I'll go ahead and set that stuff off to the side. And you can see in here we've got a set of contacts that in the off position these two have contact in the on position those two and then these are the contact bars these actually have little springs underneath them and we have a detent ball on the back side here what that does is that holds the pos selected position here in this clamp you can see the two little detents so that way when you're driving down the road it couldn't vibrate and bounce into an off position or, uh, by somebody bumping it just real lightly it's going to take a firm positive click uh, to either turn it on or turn it off Let's go ahead and get this all cleaned up. 
For the switches themselves, I'm just going to use emery cloth, some electrical cleaner, and some dielectric grease to clean it. For all these metal pieces, I'm going to go ahead and use the vapor honing machine and get those babies brought back into uh, shape there. You can see here this rubber grommet. So I don't have to think too hard how the rubber grommet goes back together. It's better off for me just to go ahead and set it in place right now. I'm just start cleaning this up with some uh, emery cloth. You'll see I'll spray some contact electrical cleaner in there as well. But uh, take your time with this. Uh, you, you got one shot to really do it right. All right, here I am starting to actually work on fixing the starter switch itself. Can I see that black dot in the middle where I'm filing? There's a close-up of it right there. That is the whole problem. That starter switch is not working. That buildup needs to be completely removed so much that you'll see I even take a pick to get the last little spot out. And then I want to keep it nice and flat, too, so I have good contact area. All right, here we go using the vapor honing uh, wet blaster there. This thing is just absolutely fantastic. If you haven't figured out that you need one of these yet, if you're doing any kind of restoration, you bring it on their website and check it out. There's a great before and after right there. As with any media blasting, it's a good idea to run all your screws through any of the threaded holes. And there I am showing that piece off again. Man, it's just fantastic. The other thing we're doing here is we're going to go ahead and give it a shot of paint. Many factory parts have a coating on there to prevent rust, so you have to reapply that once you blast it. This can be slightly difficult to show. It's more of a explain, I do it, and then when I have the two pieces apart in my hand, you'll be able to see a little bit better. But what we're really ultimately trying to do is on any of these connectors, there's a locking tab in there. And so we're trying to take, and take whatever wire we're trying to take apart. So I'm going to take this back one here. And what you want to do is, first off, do you see how I can move that around right now? So I want to push it up which is going to allow the locking tab to then slide in. You can just barely see it right, right there. Okay, so I'm going to go down with some type of straight screwdriver or specialty tool. I have these which work pretty handy and you're going to see here how I'm going to uh, go ahead and get that apart. I'm going to back up a bit and then I'll show you that process again. So I'm going to take this, remember the wire I want, I push up this can be kind of cumbersome. And then I push the locking tab in. Take a look at what I was doing. Now that I got that apart, you can actually see there's a little edge right there that the tab rests on. So let's look at the connector. So basically, I was trying to push that release tab in so that it could slip past that locking tab. Now when I go back together with it, I just simply bend this back up, hoping it's not too fragile. When I push it in place, it'll be wide like that and lock in. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the rest of the connectors now. You can see how this could be labor consuming for the average person, especially if they didn't know about you know things like this. I'm going to go ahead and cut the old harness off now. There's obviously a lot of different ways to do this, but a lot of people take razor blades and just start to slice things open. And man, the chance for cutting the wires underneath there or cutting off the insulation, I mean, bad deal. So use a lot of caution when you're working with these uh, wires and their insulation. You're going to see me get these good and cleaned up. Remember, I want to get all that sand and dirt out there. People forget that sand is an abrasive and that will chafe through the insulation. Right, good morning. Uh, we're going to be back at it here. One thing with restorations, you got to be able to give yourself some uh, time. So we needed the paint to be able to dry. That We recoated this stuff since it had a nice factory like zinc coating on there and we didn't want it to turn around and rust, rust right away. So important part of that process. I'm going to go ahead here and get this thing back together. You'll see here uh, we're going to use some dielectric grease. And I think sometimes people just put way too much of this on. we got to think that any type of grease is going to attract dirt. So really be cautious with this. Some people won't use it at all. They'll actually just make sure you have really good and clean contacts. So personal preference there. Doesn't take a lot, just a little bit. I didn't show this to you earlier, but I want to. Do you remember where I talked about inside here there were springs? You can actually see that springing on there. I don't want to pull this out since there's nothing wrong with it because I don't want to hurt the integrity of the plastic there. So one of the options in this case would be to use some electrical cleaner to reduce that risk. Just spray some on there. 
Now you gotta remember at this guy too, this is a sliding switch. So it's gonna be really important that we get some grease back on there. And I'm gonna use the dielectric. So then if you remember, I talked about that steel ball riding in those clips there. And that simply goes back and forth. Before I go to snap this in place, one thing you wanna to do too is squeeze this together. You see how I actually took it from a, a perfectly straight shape and squeeze those in a little bit? because that's, that's the basically spring pressure whatnot that holds this together. So important tip there. So they have did a great job of making this, the window on this side and the window on this side for it to lock into are of different sizes. So the switch will only fit in one way. And if you remember, our colored wires here were on top and that's what matches on the switch here. And if you forgot, you can always refer to those pictures you took, remember? Just simply set one side in, you should be able to snap the other one in place. Now take a look at what you're doing here. If this got bent up or twisted, start over. Don't make your life uh, difficult by uh, rushing things at this point. Okay, there's that one. Alright, let's work towards our starter button here. And then give this a try. Good firm click there. Okay, the next thing we had here was another switch. A little dielectric grease here. Okay, I talked about the big spring, and then we got to get the small spring into that nipple here, if you will. And then the other thing you want to pay attention to, let's put our start button in the correct orientation, which is being able to read it when it's on the vehicle. Okay, same thing. Slip in one side and then the other. Should have a functioning start switch now. And I think now would be a good time to just pause before putting it back in the housing. And then let's retest the switch itself. Now what you want with switches is continuity. And good continuity. You can see here what I'm going to prove is the integrity between the solder joint and then the ends of the actual wires. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. First off, let's test our meter. Get two tenths. We'll zero the meter. And now if I just touch those two contacts, this would bypass the switch. One tenth at that solder joint. Okay, I'm checking the wire continuity. One tenth in that wire. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and test the switch itself. And what we have to do is push the switch. Down to three tenths now of an ohm going through two switches. Three tenths through two switches. That's pretty dang good. What I can also do is skip this switch and just go to the back of the orange wire so I'm testing just this single individual switch which is the way most specifications would be. Here's a good close up of what I'm actually testing with the meter leads there. I'm going across those two, the orange and the yellow, and then making sure I have continuity once the button's pushed. And two tenths of an ohm. So we are going to be able to start this vehicle awesome now. Alright, let's finish assembly here. I'm going to go ahead here and run my ground wire first because I re recall from taking it apart that it had to fit under the switches. Routing is just crucial. There's a, a step right there. If I get this on top of that, okay, and then I push my switch through, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end up severing that wire. I want to make sure that I'm routed correctly and look for those pathways. Sometimes there's even retainers down here. So that is correct. I don't need this welded tight right now in case I need to move that eyelet, but that is in a good position now. Now I'll start to just slip the rest of this in. Being awful careful not to pinch any wires here. All switches are going to be different, so it's worried about technique. The other thing you've noticed is I haven't done my heat shrink yet because I want to be able to take advantage of pulling my heat shrink through this rubber grommet and actually getting it inside of here a little bit. Looks like I'm good there. So I can go ahead and put my retainer piece in, which also holds that switch down. 
I'm going to go back and make sure this ground one's good and tight now. This is a pivot point, so it's important that we do something with that pivot point. I'm just going to use dielectric grease since it's out and handy here. And get the bottom of it too. And then on this one, you got this ear that needs to slide into the switch there. You'll see here. There's actually enough room to just cradle it onto the switch. Pushing down. Don't worry about this faster yet until you get that switch engaged. Now I can take and line this up. This washer is also really important as well as any washers that are under here because this actually acts as a boss that stands proud or a little bit higher than the swinging switch. Get a washer missing in here. When you go to tighten this down, it would actually lock this instead of allowing it as a pivot. So you got to know your parts. And here's the bad thing is that on the parts fish, none of this is going to be shown because they only sell this as assembly. So when I say take notes, take pictures, pay attention to what you're doing, it's crucial that you do that because you're not going to have a reference to come back to except what you did yourself. And here's another thing. Check your work as you go. You'll notice here, I'm just going to get it snug, and then what I want to do is see if it works. Oh boy, this is nice now. We got a nice switch housing. Then go ahead, fully tighten it. Make sure it has not changed. If that got tighter, something's wrong. Uh, remember, this is an emergency kill switch as well. Now we're uh, ready for our heat shrink. Alright, I'm going to take some uh, safety wire and run it through and put some tape on and then try and pull the wires through. Definitely can't fit them all. I'm just going to go for the biggest one first, get it out of the way. That way the rest that are thinner might have a chance to pull through there. Looks like, looks like it's possible. We'll find out. Make sure you get the real sharp edges of that safety wire or the connector okay, itself good and taped through. up. Yeah, really good idea to do this one first because she is tight. Okay, now I'm going to just go through and uh, repeat the process for the other wires. You really want to put some thought into how you pull these through and which one goes where. So you want to look at how they lay. You can see this rubber grommet here and how this lays relaxed on here. So there's no point in me, like I said, taking this wire and pulling it over these to try and get into the sheathing. So really think about your craftsmanship and how intentional you are on doing this. So you can see here that this one that I've already pulled through is going to be a top one. I want to try and come underneath there and make it the most relaxed fit. All right, we're at the point of installing our connector. I went ahead and cleaned this with the uh, electrical cleaner as well, just like everything else. Took some emery cloth, scratched these off really good. And you remember from uh, the beginning of the video there where I was talking about how we have to bend this tab up? So I'm going to do a close-up right now of actually installing these to get that locking tab to lock into the connector. Once again, that locking tab right there, that's what I'm trying to see. Which does it need to go left, right, top, bottom? So if I flip this over and look inside there, you can see the little cutout notches to each of the, you know, the squares there, if you will, is to the left. So that means that I want to take and slide that wire connector so I'm through the back there. And now, if I have that bent out enough, when I go through, I'll get a click. And you can actually see where it just snapped into place. See that there? It's on its ledge. So make sure that you do this. Pull on that wire. It should be free like that. If that thing is really stiff, there's a good chance that you've got something wrong or it's still dirty or whatnot. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this off, do the rest of these. The other thing that I'm really looking for at this point is to see if these are really bent up. From us messing around, straighten the nose, can you see how the top one's in a little bit and the bottom one's kind of face back? What I want to do is go ahead here and straighten those. See how I got those all nice and straight now? All right, I'm going to head to the vehicle and actually try this switch and make sure it actually turns the vehicle over before I heat shrink it. 
And then I'm also going to check that routing that we talked about. Talked about here, goes along there. It's much of the same as you've already seen before. I'm going to use air pressure to clean things out, use electrical contact cleaner, use dielectric a grease. little dielectric grease around the connector itself helps it slide together. If I have to force this, then my tabs are bent, so I want to use some caution. Hey, nice. It just feels about a hundred times better, too. Okay, we're good. We got our safety switches on. We got a battery hooked up, and we're in a start position. Look at that. What I also want to do is make sure that the kill switch is working, because we had that apart. And so, nothing. No start, and then it, uh, then it works. So we're good. While I'm in here, there's a couple other wires in here. This would take me two seconds as a professional to go ahead and service these. I'm going to do that. I'm going to dielectric grease that as well. But before we do that, and I'll let you guys go, I told you I'd talk about the routing of this and how I want to heat shrink it. So I'm going to go ahead and disconnect this and take a look at how we think we want this to go. And it looks like, check your service manual for any routing. Make sure you don't heat something you're not supposed to. This is what you have to think about. You know, I have to price the new switch and say, is my labor worth doing all this repair work versus a brand new one off the shelf that's got, you know, zero life in it? If, if those two are equal, buy a new one. But part of our restoration series here is also showing craftsmanship and the things we can do. So the big question is, was it worth it for us? Not in this case. The switch is only $68. This was pretty labor intensive compared to just buying a new switch. But you got to keep in mind things like time frames. And it was about 7 to 10 days out and the customer wanted their four-wheeler back. I just wanted to show too the before and afters, you know, with the possibilities of our new Vapor Honing Sandblaster. I really want to recommend you head over to their website and check it out if you're doing any kind of restoration services or, you know, uh, bike building yourself. I mean, this company and this machine is just fantastic. So I really appreciate them being part of HotterWrench.com. The restoration series is just going to be fantastic to really show uh, in depth these capabilities. But check this out right here. You're not going to be seeing things. This is actually happening here. This sand blaster, media blaster if you will, actually comes with a rinse feature on it where you can actually wash the parts right in the machine. Man, your eyes aren't playing tricks on you. Check this thing out. I'll go ahead here and show you a quick uh, picture of this carburetor. It was nasty. Check that thing out now. Well, as always, make it a great day and keep wrenching. We'll see you next time.